Hello, my name is Abel, and I'm a student at Lebocage International School. So for my MYP, I had to do something called a personal project. And for this personal project, I chose to make a permaculture farm. This video will be going over the, that experience, will explain some aspects of permaculture, and then at the end, it will give a tutorial and footage of me making my farm and how you could do it if you want, were interested in permaculture and want to get it into it yourself but don't really have a guide you can use this video so you probably know of agriculture right so there's agriculture and there's permaculture they're not one and the same really so agriculture uses any farming methods to simply get a yield of crops so for example you'll use herbicides pesticides to keep away you know any unwanted uh, weeds or pests and then there's also, you know, the big machineries and the chemical fertilizers they use. And these all do uh, allow farmers to grow mo more crops more quickly. But the problem is they can have adverse health effects on people. An example is herbicides and pesticides. Uh, short term, uh, after being exposed to them, you could feel dizzy, you could feel itchy, you could have a reaction to them. And then there are even longer term, more serious consequences. There could be damage to your nervous system and an increased risk of cancer. Permaculture doesn't use any of these uh, fertilizers. And not only that, agriculture takes a lot of time, effort and care. Permaculture doesn't. Once you've planted all your plants in a permaculture farm that is properly made, you don't have to do anything. Maybe if you're in a dry spell, like it hasn't rained for maybe two, three weeks, you have to water it. But other than that, you don't really have to interact with it that much. You just take the plants when you want and plant the plants that you're t rotating. So that's it. And with this method, not only will you get uh, crops with much less effort, you'll get them organic, knowing full well there are no chemicals or anything that's going to poison you. So for permaculture farms, they can be as small as the one you will see me making in this video, which even then is relatively not small, to as big as the food forest, which is simply what it sounds like. A forest basically made of only fruit plants, uh, which is what my dad had built in the same land where I made my farm. And you'll see that the farm actually works together to cooperate. Uh, and what I mean by this is that since the plants, what you're trying to do in permaculture is basically create a kind of a natural environment. So an actual ecosystem that the plants will grow in naturally without you trying to force them to grow faster or bigger with any chemicals. They're growing by themselves. So they'll grow as they do in nature. And ex a great example is later in this video, you'll see my uncle who was showing me around my dad's food force explain it. But basically one tree grew larger, one tree grew shorter. So the shorter tree gets shade and the larger tree will get, uh, uh, will produce more bark to help fertilize the larger tree. So there you have it, kind of a, a, sim a very simplified version of permaculture. There are many details, but if I were to go into them, this video would be far too long. So let's get on to the actual making of this farm. So for my permaculture farm, I used a plot of land that my dad had abandoned during quarantine. Uh, this plot of land, uh, I actually forgot to measure it because I didn't need to, but for yours, it doesn't need to be the same dimensions. All you're going to want to do is measure out a flat piece of grassland in your backyard. So all you're going to want to do is grab some wooden planks after you've measured out the area where you want to... Uh, make the farm, you're going to want to take a couple of wooden planks and actually build a perimeter that's quite deep, uh, around, let's say, 15 centimeters deep. Again, it, it doesn't really matter because depending on the area of your perimeter, you're going to have a different depth and everything. So we'll get into that later. But 
after you've done that, you're going to want to take a lawnmower or a weed whacker or a uh, grass cutter or anything. And just uh, inside the plot of land, you're going to want to cut all the weeds out with it. So then once you're done with that, with the lawnmower, you're going to want to grab some gloves and you're going to have to take out any remaining weeds by hand, which does sound daunting, but it's not actually that difficult, especially after you've already used the lawnmower on the plot. Uh, there shouldn't be that much uh, weeds remaining. After you're done with weeding and getting rid of any grass in the plot, you're gonna want to irate the soil with a, uh, a fork, so a pitchfork. And basically you just do that by just taking the pitchfork, putting it in the ground, wiggling it around a bit. Don't pull up the dirt, that's not what you want. You just want to loosen it so that it's easier to work with. Uh, but then after you've loosened up the soil, what you're gonna wanna do is get some cardboard. And when you're getting this cardboard, make sure before you put it on the plot, you take off any plastic. Cause obviously plastic isn't biodegradable and we don't want any plastic in the soil. And after that, you're gonna just rip the cardboard up into large sheets or small sheets, anything that works for you. And you're going to lay it all over the plot until the uh, underneath soil is completely covered with cardboard you, and don't put two layers on top of each other just cover it all in one layer and you'll see the example later in this video so from here on out uh, I will actually be doing more voiceovers over footage of me building the farm this first section was just because I had used a, f uh, a plot that I already had and I didn't have any footage for it uh, but we'll get to that right now. A lot of land I plan to use for the permaculture garden. Uh, we can not use anything here as it will be covered by the shade of the roof and it will prevent sunlight from permeating however it, this is more than enough land and it will most likely take maybe actually it'll probably take around a day to finish uh, my action plan has not been completely finished by this point. However, we have mulch to be used. Uh, mulch will help retain moisture in the soil as well as as the mulch breaks down. It'll form fertilizer for the, the farm as it grows. And then once the farm is fully matured, it will actually self-sustain and it'll fertilize itself. We will have to plant plants which are plants that will permanently stay in this garden and will produce fruits every around two to three times a year and we will also have annual plants which will be swapped every couple of months after they're done growing. So due to time constraints and since we had to start this project a little bit late due to cyclones and then starting in DLP uh, I've chosen to dumb down the project a little bit instead of being from there to there on the plot. The plot will this little this little plot is covered up. So what I'm gonna do right now first is take out all the weeds. This is a plot that was actually being worked on by my dad until All the mulch and compost we use needs to be replaced with uh, clean compost and mulch. So what I'm going to do after I finish pulling up all these green weeds all around the edges, uh, I'm going to take a rip and I'm going to remove the first layer. Uh, usually you don't have to go through the step, but it's due to well our situation, especially how many days we've missed of uh, school and being able to go out. But uh, for now. In this section, I am removing the weeds that ha had grown over the time my father had abandoned this plot. And we're, these are really big weeds, and there's not that many of them. It, it only took about maybe five minutes maximum to get rid of all of them, just by hand. We didn't need to use a shredder or anything. But uh, when you're starting, you probably will want to use a shredder, as there will be quite a lot of weeds. 
Unfortunately, in this clip, we were working right after a cyclone, so the wind was still pretty bad and you can't hear me, but I'm simply explaining how we plan to de-weed and remove the old mulch from this plot and how using the rake, I'm going to remove the top layer of mulch. Uh, sadly, the wind continued, and in this clip, you also can't quite hear me. So, what we did after removing the top layer of mulch is uh, add a layer of cardboard. So, if you're doing this at home, you're not going to be having any mulch. After you've already shredded and irated the soil, uh, you're going to just cover that soil directly with cardboard. And uh, as you can see in the video, we use this large concrete slab to hold down the cardboard so that it doesn't fly away. You're also going to want something like that. It can be an extra wooden plank, anything. Don't crush the soil. It just needs to hold it down so it doesn't fly away. And then you're going to want to let it be for about a week so that the cardboard can actually decompose. And remember, you are going to want to remove any plastic remaining on the cardboard. So that's all we did for this week, and let's move on to the next week. So it's been a week since we came out here during the cyclone and placed the other cardboard here. Now we have some natural compost, which was well, not made, but my uncle uh, made all of this in his backyard by just putting anything biodegradable into a little compost bin and today he was uh, he was kind enough to share some with us and so we're going to uh, my dad is going off to go find some cocoa peat with a couple of workers and once we get the cocoa peat we're going to mix it with the compost and then put a layer of cocoa peat on top of the cardboard and then will do the mulching afterwards so hopefully today we'll get most of the work done and then after this it's simply a matter of planting the plants and then letting them grow so right now we've gotten wood chips for mulch uh, so this is the mulch we're gonna put on after we've already mixed the compost and the cocoa peat so after we mix the compost and the cocoa peat, we're going to put a layer of that on top of the cardboard. And after the cardboard is completely covered, we're going to put the wood chips on top, which will help with fertilizing the soil, retaining the moisture, and it'll also protect the, the soil. Yes, I realize how long this video is getting, but this is quite the process, and uh, without such a long video, it won't be possible to capture all of it. So this is biochar, which uh, is mixed with soil here. And biochar is similar to charcoal, except it's not as concentrated. So the point of biochar is that it'll help retain bacteria and water in the soil. So as you can see, these little bits of like wood, burnt up wood, all the biochar and it's mixed with soil, so we're gonna mix it with more soil and then we're gonna mix that with the cocoa peat in a few. So we 
have normal soil, which is right here, and these are the bigger roots in the coca peat. Those, that's the bio, bio char. And then this is the coco peat that we've broken down, this three bags worth of coco peat. Two buckets worth of soil, well, more like uh, one and a half, and then two buckets of uh, biochar. So we're going to mix all of this up, and once it's done being mixed, we're going to put the mulch on top. We're going to mix wood chips and probably some of the dried grass from here, which was, this was removed last time because it was too moist. Now it's dry again after a week of just sitting there. So. We should be able to mix it with the, well, we don't need to mix it, but we can also use some of this for mulching if necessary. So in a quick summary, this day is all about building the farm itself. We're not going to be planting anything. We're going to come back in a week and plant everything. And yeah, this layer is just cocoa peat. It took us around, I think, six or five bags to completely cover the entire area. The cocoa peat layer has been planted. Next up is the biocharred soil. Right now we're taking a break. Uh, so I'm doing a voiceover for this section as well, but this is more due to my own honest uh, stupidity. Uh, I didn't realize how loud the shoveling noise is, and you can barely hear me, but what we did is added rock sand or gravel you can also use to this mixture of the compost and everything, and this is to prevent air from getting into the soil. Natural compost, which I uh, showed earlier, is going to be a sort of MPK for the plants, meaning potassium and phosphorus and nitrate, uh, which will help nourish the plants and give them all the nutrients, not macronutrients, but all the elements they need to grow. So we're going to mix it into the uh, soil, cocoa peat, and uh, rock sand. So we've put a layer of compost on top of the cocoa peat and next we're going to put the rock sand, biochar, soil and cocoa peat uh, mixture on top of this. So think of this as the first layer of cocoa peat and compost. We're going to put a second layer that has um, soil, uh, biochar, as well as more cocoa peat and compost. So. What we're adding now is compost made by worms. So worms eat anything biodegradable and when they excrete it, it's compost which is extremely fertile and it's, it's going to help the plants uh, get the nutrients they require to grow. Come and film here. So, yeah. Inside the soil, there are little worms. So, all inside of this, the worms will dig into the uh, to the soil and uh, help the the comp the decomposition continue, and they'll excrete compost. compost we took two different types a black one and a darker brown one but they all have the same effect the dark brown one didn't have worms in it however but the ones from the black uh, worms compost should be good enough so now so now we're gonna start mulching so we're gonna take wood chips and we're gonna cover the surface 
have all the compost and everything in mulch and then that should be it and then next week we'll come back and start planting so this layer of cardboard will act as the mulch it's gonna feed the worms and decompose into the soil and it's gonna help fertilize the soil as well as prevent weeds from growing final part of the process, at least for today, is to put the wood chips on top of the cardboard. So the wood chips will also feed the worms. They will retain moisture in the soil, and when they break down, it'll also become compost. Everything used in a garden like this is breaks down into compost because the entire point is to make the soil extremely fertile, since in the end, you're never going to be continuously putting fertilizer every other week. You're just gonna, once you've done with this, you basically don't touch the garden. So we finished basically. Now all that's left is to water the mulch. We do need more mulch. We didn't have enough, but over the time I'm at school, uh, we have a couple of workers that are gonna come and just put the final layer of mulch on it. Uh, right now, I'm going to fill up bucket with water and dampen this a little bit but other than that that's it for today and then next week we'll come back and start planting that's it so this is the final product of the day's work uh, we finished the farm on this day and uh, one step i forgot to record during that time was uh, well, not forget to record me doing it, but forget explaining was uh, to wet the mulch using water. So using a hose, a sprayer, or a bucket, anything, just dampen and moisten the mulch. It's been one week since we did all the mulching, the compost, the biochar, and everything. So after that, you can see that this, it did rain today, but most of the mulch is still wet which is good it shows that it is retaining a lot of the moisture uh if you look underneath with all the soil you can see there's some ants and it's very very moist even under all the cardboard so it's, this shows that it's been mostly successful and right now we're going to Plant the plants. This is not a plant, this is a weed. It should not be here. So, yeah. So, it's been another week since we did the mulching and we put all the cocoa peat compost, biochar, and rock sand. And actually, the soil, and the proof of this is that it just rained and the mulch has kept most of the moisture. It's pretty wet. And then the soil underneath is also pretty moist. So yeah, it's not dry, which is a good sign. Which means the mulching and all the cardboard and everything worked. So now what we're gonna do, we just have to plant the uh, plants. The bok choy we planted last time. They have started to sprout relatively quickly, but they're not ready to be planted yet. So I'm going to start planting. So we have thyme, straw, uh, strawberries, chili peppers, uh, eggplants, and a lot, a lot of plants. All of these plants don't really need shade, so we're just gonna kind of plant them in the middle here, uh, because they, they do fine in sunlight. Uh, if, you, if we wanted to and we, needed, uh, we had plants that needed shade, we could uh, plant them a little bit closer to the edge here, because uh, when these grow over, they'll provide shade for them, or we could also just uh, provide um, we could also put plant trees in here and those trees would eventually grow and provide shade but right now we're just starting off with small plants when planting the plants uh, what you're going to want to do is dig a hole take the plant out of the pot and place it in the hole you make and then make sure to press down firmly all around the plant make sure you no air is remaining in the soil because that will affect uh, the plant's growth and we don't want that. <laughs> what we're doing now is planting potatoes. We chose to put them here in this corner because it doesn't really matter if potatoes are close to each other. As you may have noticed while the chilies, thyme, and strawberries are quite close to each other, 
the eggplant has its own kind of box or perimeter. And it's probably hard to see on camera, but that's because when eggplant grows, it grows fairly large, so it needs a lot of space. Uh, potatoes, unlike all the other plants we've done so far, you don't leave half of it sticking out, you completely plant it, and these little growths on the potatoes are what's gonna sprout into uh, potato roots. When planting the potatoes, make it deeper than the uh, the holes deeper than other plants, but also don't make it too deep, but don't make it shallow. Go. So potatoes don't require very much care, actually. They don't need to be planted deep. They don't need a lot of attention. As long as you just kind of don't walk on them really while you're walking across your pot, they'll grow just fine. But what you do have to make sure of is that uh, when you are going to retrieve the other plants that you don't just end up crushing the potatoes yourself because then you'll obviously you're not going to get any potatoes. Uh, so this is really it. This is all we need to do for now. We will mm, probably, maybe we'll come back and plant some more. It depends uh, next week. Uh, but for now, that's it. We just wait for now. And then yeah, with time, this will all hopefully eventually grow. Right, that's it. That's it. That's the final day of making the farm. Now it's just watching it grow from here. Uh, you will need to interact with the farm not very much in any other way besides making sure no diseases or pests are, you know, killing your plants. Other than that, there's nothing you need to do. You don't need to water it. The mulch is there to uh, absorb and keep moisture there. So from here on out, I will be showing you the documentation, uh, I think around a month. I did catch COVID at one point, so there is a little bit of a time difference in between a couple of the recordings, but I will put dates so that it's not too confusing. So it's been three weeks since we were last here. I caught COVID in that time, and then the week before we were busy, so we haven't had time, but the farm has made pretty good progress over that time my uncle and my dad did come here and they planted a couple of plants that uh, were dying and the way we made the bed they were hoping the bed could save the plants but it's good most of the plants that were planted last time actually all of them are doing pretty well except this one and I can't even recognize it. I don't remember what it is. But everything else has been, is growing pretty well. The potatoes, I uh, can't exactly check on those. But I suppose, again with potatoes, all you have to do is hope, but potatoes can grow practically anywhere. So the chances of them not growing is pretty low. And as you can see, well, you can't show it on camera, but it's still wet. So there hasn't been rain here in about three days yet. Because of the mulch, the, uh, sorry, the uh, soil is still wet and the plants are all getting their necessary moisture. And this looks small to begin with and yes it is if you want to look over there all of this forest was not made by my dad per se but he planted many of those plants and using permaculture created a forest level and while what we have here is on a much smaller level this is how you have to start and if you keep going you can eventually get to something of that size but with my time frame I'm not gonna be able to do that but this is still something to be proud of and nothing's died as well which is a good sign so here we are on the final day of recording for this project unfortunately I'll have to stop here due to my deadline otherwise I probably would have added a lot more but we're limited on time 
and the bok choy still isn't big enough, especially with the weather right now. It's too risky to plant it, but outside of this prof, outside of the school project, I'll still plant them eventually. And what happened was there was actually torrential rain and flash floods all over the island yesterday, April 2nd. And uh, we actually were passing by a couple other orchards and farms and we noticed how flooded they were but if you look while those giant orchards are completely flooded and destroyed this little plot of land looks completely fine and that's because not only does all the wood chips and cardboard and all the materials soak up a lot of water but there are also little trenches all around this land which force the uh, the plants to take the water up slowly so that they don't drown and that the large amount of water also doesn't just crush the plants with sheer force so as you can see there hasn't been much of a change since last week when I came to record that's to be expected plants grow at a unless you use chemicals which is one of the things that the point of this project was to avoid using chemicals but all of them none of them have died even after so i think two cyclones now and three torrential rains this not a single one of the plants on this plot have died and well, this was already dead when we planted it. We were hoping to save it, but nothing much we could do. Oh, I assure you, we're getting close to the end of the video. Just hold on a little bit more. So, that was it. That was the creation of my permaculture farm, and I thank you all for joining me on this journey. Now, first, I would like to clear up something. As you just heard me say, permaculture farm. This isn't really a... Uh, a farm. It's a raised bed, but basically it's just a gardening bed because it's not a farm. Maybe if you made multiple rows of that same uh, bed, then yeah, you could call it a farm. Uh, and then another thing I would like to mention, which is related to permaculture, is regenerative uh, agriculture. And this is actually something that permaculture is. Usually with agriculture, and I forgot to mention this earlier, it takes from the land. So you're taking the nutrients from the land that you plant your crops on and, and you deplete the land of all the nutrients because you're over farming. This is a very common thing. And, but in permaculture, you're actually adding to the land. So you create a forest, actually. In a few seconds, I'm going to show you what the land... Uh, the food forests that my dad grew, what the land used to look like and what it looks like now, and how through permaculture, not only do we have our fresh fruits and vegetables coming straight from that uh, food forest, we now have a beautiful landscape from what was practically a wasteland before. Well, not actually, but it was pretty barren. So as you can see, this is a picture of what the land looked like before my dad started his permaculture uh, food forest. And this is what it looks like now. It is lush and it's beautiful. Not only does it hold a host of flora, uh, but there is a lot of wildlife here. And my dad brought goats, so they kind of act as natural lawnmowers. They prevent weeds from growing and taking a bunch of nutrients up and this is what permaculture does it nourishes the land so as you just saw this is what permaculture can do of course it takes time like anything well you know the saying rome wasn't built in a day this will take time and effort and who knows maybe you don't have that much time but if you have the resources and the money you can not do this alone in fact in this video you saw my uncle was helping me quite a bit through my little small bed. You can hire a couple of people to help you as well with your project. I would recommend it. It is quite a lot of labor. But 
doing this, not only are you having a fun project and producing uh, food for yourself, fruits, veggies, you're also helping the environment. Instead of taking, like agriculture, you're giving with permaculture. There you have it. Uh, my permaculture farm. I know that this video may not be the highest of quality, but I don't have any big camera or even a great editing software. Actually, I edited most of this video on my, where is it? Oh, right here, my tablet, and it uh, was recorded on my phone. So uh, I'm very sorry. And uh, again, a lot of the audio issues did come from working outside without proper microphones or anything, but I'm very sorry. And if anything's not clear, feel free to uh, leave a comment below or send a message directly to my dad on Facebook. He taught me everything I know about permaculture and I'm sure he can help you out if you're having some troubles. And also send us pictures of your permaculture farms. We would love to see them and see how this video actually influenced you all. And also leave a like on this video if it was actually helpful or if you simply enjoyed watching it, even if you don't uh, do it. And I, <laughs> I'm aware how long this video is getting. I think we're coming up on 35 minutes, maybe a little under, maybe a little over. I don't know the time of uh, recording this, but uh, again, any of you that do try this out, I thank you. Any of you that didn't try this out, but still found it interesting, I thank you as well. Watching this video uh, really helps because, again, first of all, this is for personal projects, something that is very essential to my MYP. But not only that, it also recording and showing a project like this and sharing it with people. I'm not a content creator myself. This is probably, this is the first ever video I've put on social media. And again, there is the anxiety of posting a video. And again, I didn't have the best of equipment to make this video. But I still think sharing a video like this is a great way to not only help yourself learn something, but help others learn along with you. So if you want to make your own video based on your permaculture experience, go ahead. I actually encourage you all to do it. I hope you all have a great day. Thank you for watching this video till the end, and I'll see you all.